Hello and welcome to another video and this one it'll be a special one that is why I have my webcam on so uh, as you all probably already know there has been some issues in Russia this is why I tried to somewhat map it out so uh, last night allegedly according to Prigozhin the uh, Russian forces launched missile strikes on uh, the rear camps of the Wagner PMC he claims they have had losses and that uh, enough is enough. So they are going to uh, capture uh, Shoigu uh, to try and uh, reason with him. He claims this is not an armed rebellion. It is a march for justice, whatever that means, like war, special military operation, that sort of annotation. So what has happened so far what is going on what is the whole story and uh, the general situation i'll start out by uh, giving the context uh, to this then i will go through the events according to the information and then i'll end off with uh, my own thoughts so starting out what is the context behind this for the past half a year from january to now the wacker pmc and Prigozhin specifically has a uh, insulted and criticized uh, the Russian Ministry of Defense a lot, especially Shoigu and Gerasimov. Why is he doing this? First of all, he claims that they had severe lack of ammunition, and then he's increasing his claims step by step to, to significant heights. And with the latest uh, escalation, he claimed that in the rear camps of the Wagner PMC, the Russian forces uh, actually launched missile strikes on the Wagner positions. This means that the uh, Russian forces attacked the Wagner PMC and he sees that as a betrayal. Now, as I said, this part is only uh, the context, not my personal opinion so far. So essentially, he claims they were attacked by Russian missiles. The Russians say that didn't happen. He then takes his army, 25,000 strong, and marches into Rostov, where Shoigu allegedly was. Uh, but then according to Prigozhin, Shoigu saw the coming and flew away to Moscow. So I've mapped out the closest road from Moscow to Rostov, and according to Russian news, the roads in the Voronezh region here between the, the two areas from the city of Voronezh, this whole region here, the road has been cut off. So there's been a blockades on the road by the Russian forces. And essentially, this is a huge part of the country. And most importantly, it is one of the most important roads to supply the front line in Ukraine. Without this road here, most of the supplies is just cut off, especially without Rostov. So this is this has huge implications for the front line, as essentially most of the supplies has been cut off. Now, this is very interesting because uh, the Russian forces and Ukrainian forces have somewhat reached a ceasefire on the front line. From, the, from when this happened till now, essentially the front line has been completely quiet. There's no fighting. So the Ukrainians are trying to wait out to see what is actually happening. Is this an actual coup? Can we take advantage of this situation? While well, the Russian forces are just very confused. So after the first uh, few uh, reports by Prigozhin, uh, Russian soldiers on the front line started posting videos saying uh, this is not true, we're actually doing our job and stuff like that. And then Prigozhin uh, just ignores them. He goes on and now he uh, has taken over the city of Rostov. So the city of Rostov is currently under Wagner control. They control the whole city. They've taken their army and inserted it within the city. They have control over all the military installations of all throughout the city, including the airport. And they are making it run as usual. So they are not preventing anyone from going to work or anything. It's not a real occupation. They're just there. According to, to Prigozhin, they shut down uh, three helicopters through the transport from Ukraine to Rostov. Well, something very interesting is the fact that he now claims he's going to go to Moscow, he's going to take Shoigu uh, through through his own hands. He then asks uh, all of uh, 
uh, Russia to just uh, let him do it. Don't, no one should go against him. If they go against him, he will fight against them. And he, he and his 25,000 soldiers are ready to die. Then we just had a, a speech by Putin here at 9 a.m. And in that he says, essentially, welcome soldiers, you are heroes, you've done so much for Russia, but you have been tricked by this man to go uh, do armed rebellion against the country. You're defending the country, you're not, uh, you're not fighting against it. Why are you doing this? You, you should uh, think about it twice. If you uh, surrender, if you don't fight, uh, we'll forget this happened and we'll uh, forgive you. So there is this... Uh, contact right now where Putin is essentially trying to to de-escalate the situation he's trying to go to the negotiation table prevent an armed uprising of 25,000 soldiers and essentially uh, make everyone forget this ever happened something very interesting is uh, uh, there's of course Remy he has uh, good contacts within the he's got good contacts within uh, Wagner itself and as we can see here a few weeks ago, there was a productive meeting between Putin and Prigozhin, just as a reminder. So when there's this meeting he's talking about, he's talking about on the 14th of June, Prigozhin and Putin had a meeting. This is not one that was officially reported on. This is according to Wagner soldiers, the ones that he has. So essentially, Prigozhin and Putin had a meeting 10, weeks, uh, 10 days ago, and it was productive. At the same time, what we're seeing as if an effect of this is that all eyes on Russia, as he says, exactly what should happen. So essentially, what this makes me think is Prigozhin is trying to catch the attention of the whole world into this specific area. The area between Moscow and Rostov. What does it mean when you're trying to take the attention of everyone into a specific area? It's one of two things. Either you want people to see what is happening, or you want to or you want people to avoid seeing what's happening elsewhere. So essentially there's one of two things. Either Prigozhin and Putin are planning something together, and I say this because there's no way Prigozhin is stupid enough to think that he can invade Russia with 25,000 soldiers with no air support and no anti-air defense. They claim three helicopters have been shut down, but that's still helicopters. They cannot shoot down fighter jets. Even if they can, Russia has a very large air force. They can essentially just destroy the Wagner army without even facing them. On top of that, they have huge reserves. They have a standing army. There's a lot of things. Although most of the army, every, all of the units, all of the Russian units in the zone of conflict will not be able to participate in this because they are essentially, uh, they're, they're essentially preoccupied. However, there's a lot of soldiers in rotation and Russia can easily, easily take these on rotation and put up a reserve force and then send them towards uh, the Wagner forces. So this is not something that is sustainable. Unless the whole of Russia just accepts what he's doing and just leaves him be, then it's not going to happen. So if this is an actual rebellion, then he will now try to negotiate because there's no way he's going to win. And he's probably taken the city of Rostov as hostage. However, the other possibilities that he's working with Putin as a result of this uh, meeting 10 days ago and this is definitely, if it is a something that uh, Putin and Prigozhin have uh, made a deal on, that they have prepared beforehand, then it is something that has been prepared for a very long time. Because this whole complaining about uh, Gerasimov and uh, Shoigu has happened for over half a year now. So this is a plan long in making. So what does this actually mean? It means that there is a second possibility, and that possibility is Prigozhin and Putin are working together to create this uh, this uh, stage for uh, whatever uh, they are planning. So what could they be planning? Two things. First off, if they're trying to divert the attention from elsewhere to this location, then there could be a plan on uh, mobilizing some forces, 
maybe attacking the Ukrainian flank, uh, making a new front by Bulgarod. And that would be if the Wagner forces moving towards Moscow suddenly change direction. And suddenly, Kharkiv is on their sides. This has been discussed by the Wagner forces. They've been talking, we should go to Belgorod, we should take that part of the front line. So, is that what they're going to do? It's a valid question. Rushing Moscow with an army of 25,000 with a few armored vehicles, no real uh, support. It's not going to happen. They don't have artillery support. They don't have uh, enough anything uh, to conduct a armed operation within Russia. Uh, it would need at least 10 times as much. They don't have that. So will they instead go to Belgorod, launch an offensive in Kharkiv, combined with a reserve army of, let's say, 164,000 Russian troops that have recently been formed by the end of this month. Who knows? But essentially what I'm saying is uh, the situation right now is not very clear. There's a lot of questions and not a lot of answers. However, one thing is clear, and that is that military correspondents in uh, Russia are also completely confused. They're, they're spreading everything that they hear, and they're very confused. Something very interesting is that these also have contact to Putin. They have direct contact with Putin. They made a council uh, about the same time as uh, this uh, whole situation started, where essentially they speak directly with Putin. So this is what is happening with everyone who's in direct contact with Putin. So this is something to do with, uh, like, this is definitely not pre unpredictable. This is something that Putin would definitely have predicted uh, if it is real. And if it isn't real, then he's the one who planned it. So assuming that there is some huge issue here in the country uh, with uh, essentially uh, nothing. So assuming that this is a Russian civil war is, I, I think it is weirder than not assuming. Uh, assuming this is a Russian civil war is way more weird than assuming that this is a staged conflict between Prigozhin and Putin in my eyes. But yeah, these are the two possibilities. Either it is armed conflict, he tries to, to get rid of Shoigu. This could also be Putin's plan to get rid of Shoigu. Just uh, send Prigozhin after him if he didn't like him or if he was getting too much power. Or it could be a plan to divert their attention and send uh, forces elsewhere uh, where everyone else isn't focused on because they're focused on this thing. And they could essentially be doing something like that. In the end, what is definitive so far is that Wagner holds the city of Rostov. The front line is essentially very silent on the whole front. There has been no indication of any real fighting going on between the Wagner forces and the Russian forces. Although there has been reports of it, there's no real evidence of it. So in the end, what's happening? We don't know. What is the objective? We don't know. What we do know is something is happening, whether planned or not, and it's going to have a huge effect on the war. And depending on what it is, this could be Russia's doom or gloom. But in the end, what we're seeing is a huge escalation to the conflict between uh, Prigozhin and Shoigu, and the situation could develop in any direction, essentially, uh, right now. So we'll have to see what happens. That's going to be all for this video. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.